We are here at the third contest. Yes, the one, two, three of the Supernova Booking Challenge here. Pro Wrestling Melee Season 6. I am Doc Savage, show creator, company creator, all-around piece of shit kind of guy. No, I kid. I, I, Do I you? I, no, I don't. I was waiting for someone to, to challenge me on that. But I'd like to welcome all of you as we continue this tournament to showcase at least for our sixth season who will reign as Booker Supreme. And we are joined. I am joined by two gentlemen who should really know each other because this is the third time they're meeting this season alone. They kicked off the season. They then met in the first tournament of the season, and they now collide here in our third tournament of the season. But this time, it's a booking theme. Gentlemen, I would first like to introduce, and thank you both for being here. Let me introduce the man who holds the advantage in your series of contests. He is a gentleman, but we can't call him a scholar because he is the scholar. You see how I did that? We can't call him a scholar. He is the scholar. He is a man who educates the masses, and better yet, he puts down the masses. <laughs> and he bends the masses if you've seen him in actual competition. He is none other than Professor Tom. How are you, my friend? Well, judging by the trend lines, I think my uh, prior values here are going to show that uh, we're going to confirm them a little bit later on. Yeah. I hate the fact that I understood everything you said because I thought I put that part of my education behind me. <laughs> well, maybe you need to update your Bayesian priors on that. Ooh, I hate myself even more now. <laughs> but let me introduce your opponent because this fella has I, I don't know there's there's this wave of support that that our viewers have behind this individual they enjoy watching him they enjoy listening to him and we're not even talking about his day job of being a rock and roll badass no we're just talking about this man gracing us on this program to talk pro wrestling he is none other than the rock and wrestling erection how are you buddy Oh, you know, I do. Let me tell you I something. Do. I'm here to talk and I'm going to rock. Let's do this thing. All right, gentlemen, you have a very interesting contest here because let me just point this out because this is the only contest in this round where I'm not giving you time limits. I have enjoyed your contest, your head to head so much this season. To hell with it. I make the rules. So you get to book as long as you want without time limits. All right. And there will uh, be no, I will not allow the loser of this contest to claim that this was a lights out match. And so it doesn't count. Oh, it counts. There's no time limits. And my word, my judgment is final. So we are going to start with the gentleman who owns the most victories in your series of concerts. We're going to start with Professor Tom and your booking topic is, and this is appropriate since this episode will air the day before where your challenge is supposed to begin. Book a program between the Briscoes and FTR in AEW where the Briscoes debut at Revolution, but the two teams do not have their first match until all out in August of 2022. And the floor is yours, Professor Tom. Well, I think the most important thing that we can do is uh, obviously, besides just keeping the two teams apart, is to give the Briscoes a chance to do what the Briscoes are really good at. Now, originally, we, we can think back to when they were 16 and 18 years old, and they were seen as, uh, you know, these technical marvels. That's not what we're looking at anymore right now we're here to see some wild-eyed southern boys although i believe that refers to some other team uh who are going to put themselves through some tables and uh, uh go home and uh choke some chickens so we need to give them an opportunity to really show what they are capable of doing to an audience that may know them, but hasn't seen them in the AEW context already. 
So my sense is one of the best things we can do with them is set them up against Darby Allen and Sting. All right. So Sting is clearly he's not where a lot of the work is going to get done here. So I think what we can really do is set them up for like a kind of a nothing match set up Jay Briscoe and uh, Darby Allen on one of the weekly shows, maybe as the, the main event on a rampage. We all know the most important match on Rampage is the, the one that opens it up. And the main event is usually, you know, a throwaway match that uh, that just happens to be last on the card. Um, but during that, uh, during that program with Darby Allen, we end up seeing kind of the crazier side of the Briscoes. This gives Darby Allen a chance to do what he's really good at, which is look like he's died several times, go through several tables, uh, turn into, you know, multiple different angles. And at some point uh, during that program, uh, during that original match, uh, we have Mark Briscoe uh, interfere and we just commence the clubberin', which of course brings Sting out and uh, we see a pull apart brawl. Now we do a slow burn with this, uh, Probably the, the way AEW would book this is we'd have six weeks of interviews behind uh, the scenes where uh, one of the teams kept interrupting the other team. What I would prefer to see would be uh, some good old fashioned jobber in matches, bring up some of the people who haven't uh, haven't gotten some exposure on Rampage, make this a Rampage program and just have some good old fashioned interference. Uh, have the Briscoes interfere, have Sting work a, the rare singles match as a main event on Rampage, have the Briscoes come down, beat his ass. And then as we're coming into one of the early pay-per-views of, uh, of the, uh, the period in between here, we're going to see uh, them blow off that feud in uh, something akin to a lights out match. All right now, I'm hoping that they don't run, they don't actually run it as a full on lights out match because they've really beaten that gimmick to death over the past few weeks, um, over the past few uh, seasons, as a matter of fact. Um, but what I want to see is some real violence. Uh, I want to see Sting turned into a sympathetic baby face. He can take the fall. We protect Darby Allen, and at the end of it, the Briscoes go into the familiar. Uh, refrain after they defeat Darby Allen and Sting that they have shown that they are the greatest tag team in the world. At which point, FTR comes down to call their bluff. They say, You beat a 60 year old man and a 16 year old boy, and here's what's going to happen. We are going to meet you at the next pay per view. The rest writes itself. I, I firmly believe that what you have just pitched is a, a big money idea, big, big money idea, but you're a numbers guy. You know that rock and wrestling erection, you are up against a very concise, very focused uh, display of master booking here. Mm. But uh, anybody who knows you is fully aware that you bring both the steak and the sizzle. <laughs> so the floor is yours, my friend. I want to first, maybe this is not the greatest sportsmanship, but Professor Tom, love that. I love all of that. So many great points. So remember, this is just a friendly competition. Um, so in my opinion, in a Revolution, they show up during Jurassic Express match. And they show up, Mark eating out of a can of Dinty Moore. And, you know, Jay Bug Eye, just like, you know, John with anybody, right? They don't even do it. They, they, they show up, they're there for like a minute. Oh my God, who, you know, who are these guys? They don't, they don't sell it. Then on Dynamite, when uh, <laughs> FDR comes out, suddenly, Briscoe's, where are you at? What took you so long? Briscoe's come out. I say, we were just waiting for Mr. Moneybags to give us the official invite. You know, we'll take you on any time. But Santana and Ortiz are like, uh, no, you can't skip the line, guys. You can't just come in here. And then Gun, uh, Gun Club comes out and says, yeah, if you want to, if you want to start here in the tag team division, you got to go through us. And fucking Billy Gunn's like, my boys are the toughest guys in AEW. Papa Briscoe comes out and says, oh, hell no. 
because you got to have Papa Briscoe in there, man. That, that guy's a motherfucking star. So this leads to FTR uh, having a parking lot brawl against Santana Ortiz, which they lose. Briscoes beat the crap out of Gun Club at double or nothing. Hardy's debut. Bucks take the tag team title away from Jurassic Express and MJF beats Hangman. Boom. This is a big thing. Sets us up for Fighter Fest. Fighter Fest starts. FTR goes to Briscoes. I mean, we're going to beat you, but we got to beat these young fucks first, right? Lucha Brothers say, no, 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 no. We got some unfinished business against them. They have to have their rematch of their cage match. But before that happens, we have this big thing between a brother versus brother versus brother versus brother match between, um, sorry, sorry uh, with the Hardys, the Gun Club, Luchas, and Briscoe. Whoever wins gets the bucks. Luchas win. They have their cage match. Finally, we have FTR beating Hardys. Briscoe is taking on uh, Santana Ortiz. Keeps building, keeps building. FTR then says, listen, uh, you now can have the fucking Hardly Boys. We're done with them. <laughs> so finally, we have FTR. Sorry, so we have FTR, the Bucks, uh, Santana Ortiz, the Briscoes. Sorry, th- I mean, sorry, the Hardy Boys. The Briscoes have the Hardy Boys. The Hardy Boys have a three prong match versus a regular in ring match, the Hardy Compound match, and the Chicken Farm match. Building up, building up. Meanwhile, FTR is just plugging, beating everybody, beating everybody that they can. Finally, it all coalesced up into all out. FTR says, you want it? Briscoe say, how about right now? You pussies, you ready? Dak says, you want us right now? Well, you can have us. Briscoe's like, let's get in the ring. Dak says, nah. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a scaffold match. We got Briscoes versus their Papa versus FDR and Tully. But there's only one person that could be the special guest referee at a scaffold match between the Briscoes and the modern day Midnight Express and one of the four horsemen, James E. Cornette. You get Corny in for that match. That makes sense cutting the most amazing promos between the Briscoes, FTR, and Cornet. Finally, Mark falls. He takes he takes the, the pin. He, he takes the fall. Now the feud officially starts. It starts with fucking Cornet giving his nod of approval, and then we have the official feud. So, so that pitch was almost the epitome of the word decadent because you just kept throwing more. It's like, it's like you were preparing this beautiful steak and you're just like, yeah, let's put some more butter in the pan. And you just, Oh, that, that is so damn savory. It's funny. There were, there were moments of your pitch uh, of your booking. I got too excited. I got too excited. No, it's, it's not that it's, there are moments where you're, you're because you, because there's such a depth of, other teams being infused throughout your booking. I I just hear because I, I listen to his podcast, I hear Jim Cornette like losing his mind, like, why are there so many goddamn multi-man mat? Because you, you know, he's so old school sure. that you know, you know how it is. But then you bring him into the actual feud of two teams that he loves. He vehemently loves these two teams. It makes sense. I think we all know he'll never step in an AEW ring. Uh, I think the only way to make that happen is to one, do the event in Louisville two fire every single person in the company. He <laughs> wouldn't like, <laughs> but I mean, you were tasked with booking. I didn't say how feasible it would right. be. Fantasy booking. <laughs> oh man. So oh, this, this is exactly how I expected it. Logic versus just a wave of emotion grounded booking versus the beauty. That is the unpredictability of wrestling. So one of you, one of you pitched wrestling. I think the way Jim Cornette's generation would have loved it. The other pitched 
wrestling the way I think this iteration of wrestling fan, this generation of wrestling fan would absolutely uh, froth at the mouth over. And I love both your pitches. I'm going to strictly make my decision based on who gave me more details, right? More details. And, and it's not just the volume. It's the fact that it did make sense within the framework. So you no longer have a donut. Your opponent already knows you no longer have a donut in this series. Congratulations, Rock and Wrestling Erection. You, you, uh, you pretty much threw the most delicious paella in my face with all the meats. Listen, if I'm going up against the professor, I got I to gotta use all my tools. I ain't one for book learning, professor. Huh? <laughs> well, that much is clear. Well, gentlemen, I mean, again, I'm pretty sure you're, you'll meet at some point. Man. If not this season, the next season, it's bound to happen. Our, our league is only so big. <laughs> but the important thing here, Rock and Wrestling Erection, you have just punched your ticket. You have a date with the money maker to get into the finals. And gentlemen, not only that, but since we are in the month of March, we are at the end of this month going to have our melee rumble for the kids to, uh, contest. It's going to be amazing. One person will guarantee themselves a title match mm. at melee mania six. It's the last way to get a title match. And I, I'll do a little breaking news now since we had so much fun in this recording. In previous years, it was trivia-based. That will not be the case this year for the Melee Rumble. We're doing hot takes. You guys are going to have to shit-talk your way to a title <laughs> shot in the name of helping children. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah, I, I, I thought that was going to be pretty delicious. You yeah. know, like just have a bunch of adults engaging in harsh rhetoric <laughs> to raise money for kids y'all right, right. that's how we do it yeah. but i i'm so grateful for your time gentlemen i know that you know with work schedules family life you guys really carved you know this time out to help us with this and i'm so grateful to you both i love you both and i cannot wait to see both professor tom come back to compete and to see i mean Rock and wrestling erection. You, you, you may. I may have to live vicariously through you because I know you saw how I got screwed out of my contest with the money maker. So I, I'm not judging your contest. I'm not. So I'm just gonna host and watch vicariously with great right. anticipation to see that little pencil neck get his comeuppance. <laughs> I'm doing it for Doc. You're doing well, it for Rock and Doc. I think that's one thing that we can all agree on. That the money maker is a pencil necked geek. <laughs> that we are looking geek. forward to seeing his destruction. Yeah. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, Rock and wrestling erection. I want you to stretch him in the ways of the Steiner brothers in the early nineties. I, I want you to stretch that little bastard. Now, clearly, he doesn't mean joints either. He means the kind you do with sharpies. Hey, you got it. You got it, gentlemen. <laughs> thank you so much to you, First, our viewer. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Keep, keep following us here. This tournament will keep rolling on. And not only will we crown a booking champion for this season, but like I said at the end of the month, you know, some people prefer it over Melee Mania. It's what we do for the kids of St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital, the, the Rumble. So stay here on this channel. Bookmark it. Subscribe it. I don't care what you do. I'm not technically savvy, but, you know, I'm just a pretty face. But thanks for watching. Everyone take care. We'll catch you later. Cheers.